Hi guys, this is a part one of a series that I'm planning to do. In this series, we will basically look at how to completely deploy a Django app from start to finish. And like this app will have various components. We will use uh, we will be using uh, Redis as a cache. We will be using Celery as our uh, task queue. And we will also be using Postgres uh, database. In this uh, in this series, we will cover a lot of things. Uh, we will cover how to create an EC2 instance, and like we will then take a look at the nginx configurations and Gunicon uh, configurations, like how to set up both of these things. And we will also take a look at System D services, how to create all of them. Like a lot of developers only focus on the like development part and not uh, not deployment part. So like if you are not familiar with the system D services or Gunicon or Nginx, then don't worry, we will cover everything in detail. But we will not be covering Django or Celery or Redis. Like that is out of scope for this video. Like there are a lot of other people, other great tutorials on YouTube that cover that but i did not find anything that uh, covers the deployment in full detail and yeah one more thing also we will also be covering like how to get an ssl certificate and how to create load balances and all the dns uh, configurations also if you have a custom domain and yes we will obviously be using aws like we will be using route 53 load balances ec2 and rds maybe even elastic cache just for demonstration purposes like only ec2 aws services sorry but uh, i guess the same can also work on other cloud hosting platforms but i haven't tried that so i can't say anything about that so yeah let's get started like as you can see like i have created a virtual environment here and like I am using it now let us install Django okay I'll just for fast forward a little bit so that I can do the setup all right guys so here we are like I have done all the setup now let us start with the creation of our simple app first let us create a urls.py file and yeah we can use github copilot to do that it is pretty helpful helpful for these things Now let us create our view. Like this is just to see if everything is working or not. We'll create a HTTP response. And yeah, we can import it from django.http. And in the main URLs uh, file, need to add configurations. And yeah, we can add it just like that. Okay, it seems to be working. And yeah, guys, like I am at the official Celery website. So we are now setting up Celery. Like you can take a look at all of the documentations if you are not aware of it. Like it is a task queue. It, is, it can be used to perform asynchronous tasks like the 
entries in the database or API calls like the tasks which are either compute uh, expensive or the tasks which use a lot of time okay, we need to set some settings for our Celery app and we can ask github copilot to do that for us or if you would like to take a look at all of the other available settings it is available on the Celery documentation there are a lot of them uh, for this like we will only use two broker URL and result backend we will use but it is not really required to store the results but I'll just simply put it there okay now let us create a sample uh, sorry celery.py file uh, to set up the celery okay, we can again ask github copilot to do that for us I'm not sure if it will be able to do it successfully okay uh, seems a little off for as compared to what is given in the documentation let's just copy the one given on the official page uh, yeah this is for Django we can just copy and paste this file and we need to change something uh, yeah right here in the app we need to change can just put our app name uh, which is sample right here all right yeah for celery we can create a tasks dot by Uh, for now let us also add redis as our cache uh, let's ask github copilot to do that for us let's see it was not able to do it okay they seem a little off I'll just cross check once with the official documentation official Django documentation now we can just search for Redis and yeah we can copy paste this options is not required so we will just remove options Yeah. yeah and that was our redis server yeah if you don't have the redis server you can go on to the official documentation of redis okay okay backend is also wrong that github copilot gave us let's just put this one yeah okay so what I'm planning to do for this project is like we will have two views in one view we will add something to our cache and in the other view we will uh, see what is in the cache like we will use a uh, celery task to add something to our cache like it is not an ideal case for celery but it is just a tutorial so we can do this uh, uh, we can do this without any problems okay let's just try to do it with, uh, without creating a task first then we can just uh, we will create a task we 
with some port cache and yeah let us create the cache now I call test and you can put this uh, time to live as 60 seconds that should be fine and we can put it as an array or or or, or a string would be better and yeah guys like uh, yeah let's put it as a string okay let's see now if it is working or not okay okay we are getting a uh, error called no module named redis okay okay let's just see what github copilot has to say about this yeah like i'm sorry for forgetting the uh, installs but i don't do this every day so yeah let's just do pip install redis like github copilot suggested us okay it is gone now okay great now we can see the cache here in our redis cli and let's see the value okay it is an encoded value but we get an idea okay now let us create another view to see the cache we can name it as get cache Okay, let we can import a JSON response. It would be better. Okay, let's add it to the our URL.py file. now let's check get yeah get okay we are getting the value okay now let us try to uh, like change the cache every time we go to the page so we know that something is happening okay now let us uh, get the cache we can can get the cache and if it is not there we can just set it as zero Yeah, we can just increment the cache every time we go to the page yeah, this should be uh, simple enough and in the other view we can see what is going on yeah, so like I reloaded it multiple times and it shows 5 and I reloaded it once more and it should show 6 ok great it seems to be working now ok now what we can do is we can add a task uh, that will change our cache the thing that we are doing in our view right now we can do it in, uh, as a Celery task okay so let us do that we need to import the Celery app for sample.celery import app Yeah, like we can move this part to the to our task. We need to import the cache. Okay, we can just return x plus one. No, it is not mandatory, but let's still do it. And let's go to our views and remove the cache. We need to import the task and we can execute it right here. Ok, 
Okay, great. Okay, now we are at the Celery documentation again and let us see the command to start the worker. We found this command like this is a good command for testing but I would not recommend it for production as it as there is a better command for production it will start it automatically as a daemon we can also start multiple workers with the same command okay we are getting an error yeah app name okay another error no module name proj okay let's see maybe we missed something in our configurations okay Let's try again, I don't see anything. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, settings path was wrong. Okay, now it is working. Like we can see it has identified our task. So yeah, let's try again. And hopefully it should work. Okay, yeah, it is incrementing. So yeah, I guess this is it for this video. In next video, uh, in next videos of this, this series, we will take a look at all of the things that I uh, said in the beginning, like how to deploy. First, we will create an EC2 instance. Then maybe we will do some DNS configurations for our own domain. And then we can maybe bind it to Gunicon and like, create daemon for salary and all like I will show you everything don't worry just stay tuned and yeah for database like we can use the Django admin like it will sh give us an idea of the database whether if it is working or not like you see I created a super user and like all these fields are stored in the database also so we will be using a Postgres service for this uh, on Amazon RDS so yeah, this is it for this video and thank you for watching.